it's the best of the rest. Time to put them to the test. In case your memory is hazy, it's black exploitation, baby. This is Black's History Month, a 29-day celebration of black exploitation films. For this year's Black's History Month, I'll be covering some movies that don't necessarily fall into the black exploitation category, but will still be movies important to the culture and the history of black film. The first movie on this year's list, Uptight, is one such movie. Uptight even predates the 70s, being filmed and released in 1968. It has some of the elements that define a black exploitation film, but for the most part, it's more of a stage drama type of film. Uptight was written and directed by Jules Dassin, an already prolific director who was towards the tail end of his career by the time he made this movie. However, it was co-written by the great Ruby Dee and Julian Mayfield, who both star in the film. If you remember when I talked about the movie Hitman last year, I mentioned how that movie was basically a remake of 1971's Get Carter, which itself was an adaptation of the book Jack's Return Home. Uptight has a similar journey to the screen. The movie is a remake of the 1935 film The Informer, which was also based on a book of the same name. Hey, at least Uptight waited quite a few years before putting their spin on it, unlike Hitman, which barely waited a year. There's a lot of similarities between The Informer and Uptight, but aside from the race of the cast, it makes other key changes where it counts, some expected and unexpected. Just by pure chance, the movie started filming shortly after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And seeing an opportunity to strengthen the narrative of the film, director Jules Dassin took a trip to Atlanta, Georgia and captured footage of the massive funeral for Dr. King. The movie begins with this footage and uses MLK's death as a backdrop for everything that's about to happen. And if you didn't know any better, you would think it was always supposed to be that way because it fits so well with the story you're about to see. The real uptight follows the exploits of a black revolutionary group who've decided that peaceful and non-violent resolution is no longer an option. I like that not everybody associated with the group agrees with this and the movie shows that when it comes to civil rights, nobody ever has or is ever going to agree on the methods. On one side, you have the militant group, led by BG, no not the rapper, but the one who's played by Raymond St. Jocks. I talked about him last year when I talked about Cotton Comes to Harlem. They are dead set on the violence and no longer want help from any white advocate groups. But on the other side, you have Kyle, played by Frank Silvera, who wants to use white advocates in the government to help further the black cause. This mirrors a lot of what went down during the real civil rights era, and just like in real life, it has a lot more nuance in the movie. It's actually amazing that the character motivations play so well into Dr. Kane's assassination, because if you try to imagine it never happening, it's kind of hard to get behind either side of the ideology. But because the movie leads with that, you feel the pain and desperation of the revolutionaries, where otherwise, it might have came across as irrational. You might be thinking that the whole film is carried by this conflict, but believe it or not, this is actually the background plot. Most of the film is actually about a former member named Tank Williams, played by co-writer Julian Mayfield, and his best friend and highest ranking member, Johnny Wells, played by everyone's favorite pimp, Max Julian, years before the Mac. This part of the story is the part that's almost completely lifted from the informer. Tank is ostracized and kicked out of the group because of his constant screw-ups and alcoholism. But his friend Johnny always has his back no matter what, even through constant disappointment. Without giving too much away, there comes a point where Tank has to decide between turning on his friend Johnny or defending the revolution that's turned their back on him. Admittedly, when I first watched this, I was like, why is the movie spending so much time on this dude? But the longer you watch it, the more you become invested in old Tank. That's the mark of good storytelling, and it doesn't hurt that Julian Mayfield carries the whole thing on his back. You go through all the emotions with this guy. One minute you hate him, then you feel sorry for him, until eventually you just want him to win, despite him being a bit of an anti-hero. Like I said, it's nuanced. There's also all kinds of symbolism and expressionism all throughout if you appreciate that kind of thing. He's not the only powerhouse in the film either. Co-writer Ruby D doesn't have much screen time as Tank's girlfriend Laurie, but she makes sure she eats up what little time she is on screen. I'm sorry. Those damn welfare people, they- I can't feed the kids on salt. They eat food, not salt. I feel about your kids like they was mine. Then feed them like they was yours. Maybe the biggest reason I wanted to include this film is because it features many of the people who would become somewhat synonymous with the black exploitation era. People like Roscoe Lee Brown, 
Dick Anthony Williams, who most people know as Pretty Tony, the aforementioned Raymond St. Jocks, Max Julian, and Ruby D. And my personal favorite, Katie Lester, who most people know from Blackula and House Party 3. Uptight is her first movie, and even from the beginning, she never disappointed. No, he's a liar. Do you want to know what they pay for blood? Well, ask me. Ask me and my whole family. They pay you $5 for RH positive and 7 for negative. And that's all they pay you, you son of a bitch. It just goes to show you that black films had plenty of substance prior to 1970. And even if you have a negative view of what would eventually become black exploitation, the classical black actors of the time certainly didn't. If you're in the mood for a smart and competently acted drama, then I highly recommend Uptight. Despite it being a remake, I think it stands on its own as a film representative of the generation. 